<laughs> when I started directing the video, I just had to use that ooh face. All right, let's get down to business. I hear the question often, people asking, can I put any other fish with my goldfish? The answer is yes and no. A big conditional no. For many months now, I've been keeping Corridora catfish with my goldfish with no problems. Remember, size matters. They cannot swallow each other. There are a lot of different Corridora catfish available. To be precise, there are over 520. The ones you are most likely to find in your shops are Corridora Sturbi, the Pygmy Corridora, Tiastatus, also small like the Pygmy, Barbados, Orange Laser, Panda, Albino. So many, 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 many. Let's just watch the album. In my aquaria, I've got an albino, I've got a spotty one, and I have a whole lot of bronzies. In my experience, they do not like to be moved. But if you need to move them, move them in batches. Have you picked your favorite? <laughs> Corridoras do best at a pH between 6.6 6 and 8. So if your pH reading is 7 point anything, you're okay. Corridoras are bottom dwellers, therefore bottom feeders. So whatever you feed your fish, make sure that some get to the floor. If you have very fast fish, they might eat everything up before it reaches the floor. And you don't want your Corridoras to live on dirt only. If you have floor cover that can hide eggs, you might see little babies in your tank. If that floor cover is made of plants and you keep it with goldfish, good luck. Small fine grass to a goldfish is salad. Just like my goldfish, they love bloodworms. Actually, any kind of worms for that matter. Cory fish are schooling fish. So it is kind of mean if you don't have at least three of them. Six better. In the wild, they actually move in groups of about a thousand. They are freshwater fish, but they can also live in tropical conditions. Cory fish are beautiful in their own right, especially if you see the light reflecting from them. So it is difficult to resist the urge of not buying one of each you can find. They are better off and happier and more likely to breed. If you have a bunch of the same kind. Corridora should never be skinny. Skinny Corridora equals unhealthy. Maybe something wrong. Maybe parasite. You better check it out. This one is a rescue. It is bending right now, but that is not what a Corridora should be shaped like. That is, that is healthy. There is something wrong. Right, let's get to the part of Corridora versus Goldfish. Goldfish will swallow Corridora if small enough. Corridora's fin gets stuck in Goldfish's throat. Goldfish can get injured. One point Corridora. Next, Goldfish spawn. Eggs fall everywhere. Corridora sees it. Corridora sees it as food. Corridora, one point. Eggs, gone. Next. Some lucky eggs survive and they hatch. And they are little fishes. Corridora sees them. The fishy fits into the mouth. It's food. Corridora, one point. Next. Small Corridoras, so cute. Big goldfish, grown out, or just really big. See Corridora, snack. Goldfish, one point. Next. 
Next. Corydoras spawn and lay eggs. Goldfish sees eggs. Goldfish thinks nom nom nom. Eggs become food. Par for the cause, they will eat each other's egg. Unless you have coverage, protection and lots of it. I'm going to let you in on a little secret about Corydoras. Don't tell anyone, but they have a toxic gland. Under a lot of stress, they can release toxins. It has happened that you can buy a couple, put them in the bag, go home. And wherever they end up destination, every fish in the bag died because they released the toxin. It is possible. They can do this. It can happen. But it is very, very rarely experienced there. Corridoras are referred to as part of the cleanup crew. Now I want to make something clear. No fish will clean your tank so much so that you don't need to. Ever. Bigger pieces of food that falls onto the floor, including fish poop, they would further break it down. It would become more soil-ish. They do eat algae, but do not think that they are going to clean the algae of your tank. Look at the picture in front of you. They eat algae wafers and bloodworms, but they are not algae scrapers. That's your job. Let's rehearse again. Why did you want oh, curry yeah. fish? To put them with your goldfish to help with the cleanup. And they really do. They break the poop up into soil. This soil they break the poop into is toxic and has to be removed regularly, at least weekly. When you decide that you're now going to keep Corridoras, you need a minimum 10 gallon tank. It's about 50 liters, 5 zero. Why are they so small? Here is why. Because there's cooling fish and you can't have only one. You need between three and six. They're a bunch of fun to watch because they dash all over your aquarium. Many quarry owners like to keep theirs on sand substrate. The reason is that they can go and dig and find things to eat. You can also use gravel, but go for the smoother type. Because remember, they've got these barbels on their faces. And a substrate that's too rough can damage them. Corridoras are great for almost any community tanks. Keep their mouth sizes in mind as to what they can eat and what can eat them. And keep them away from the aggressive kind of fish and they'll be fine. They themselves are not aggressive. They do not attack any other fish. You will see these little creatures with the fingers on their mouths shooting up to the surface to get water and back down to the floor like bullets. These little sweeties are from South America. They occur naturally in Peru. You are likely to find them in small streams, ponds, swamps and banks of rivers and lakes. These barbels on their faces act like little fingers where they feel where they are going. Also a bit similar like cat whiskers. The bigger varieties can grow up to 5 inches but that's unlikely to happen to the aquarium tops that we get. Here's something interesting. How old do you think these little things can get? I'm going to give you some time to think. Tick, 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 tick. 
the answer is they can get up to 20 years. That is right. Two zero, 20 years. If they live happily enough, they may decide to breed. When that happens, they assume a T position. That's when the female brings the sperm to get her eggs fertilized. This happens in about 10 seconds. If you're still watching, you certainly deserve the next bit of interesting info. Of all my fish I have currently, these are the only one that blink. But it's not really a blink. Fish can't blink. They just happen to be able to roll their eyes. And that makes it look like they are blinking. More than once I said, Hey, wait, did that fish just wink at me? Another unique thing about them is that they breathe air. The gills are not designed to take in enough oxygen from their surroundings. So that's why you see them dashing up and back down to the bottom of the floor. And so there you go. That's just about everything I know about the Corridora catfish. They are sweet. They are harmless, they are peaceful. Unless, just like any fish, this rule goes to any tank. If a fish fizz into the mouth of another fish, it will be food. Apart from that, they are so sweet. You would love them. Let's get a bit into the species. Let's do some geek talk. They are from the family Kalich Thediae. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correct or not. They have more restricted areas of endemism than other Kalich Thediaes. Corridora catfish are not present in Panama. They're from the tribe Corridora Dini Hudeman, found 1952. Their genus is Corridoras lacepede from 1803. This is the largest genus of neotropical fish. Their name is derived from the Greek kori with a K, K-O-R-Y, meaning helmet and dora, skin. They do not tolerate more than a small amount of salt. Some species no salt at all but you might still need to treat them with salt if they get a case of the itch in which case do what you need to do they naturally live from insects and plankton but since they are scavengers and cleanups they will eat the flesh from a dead fish if they find it their reaction to threat is to lie still. This is called cryptic behavior. But most don't do that anymore. I believe it's from breeding. They just don't do that anymore. And it's also because of the armor and the venom. And they are not very palatable fish. Their activity can peak at twilight time. Two new species were found in 2003, which are, and once again mind my pronunciation, Corridora defias and Octocinclus mumulus. There you go. I believe you now have more than enough information to make wise selections when you buy your Corridoras. And don't show off just because you probably know more about them now than the shop owner. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this. If you did, please push like. If you are curious to see what next I'm going to come up with, subscribe. I hope to see you soon. Enjoy your fishing.